Right, well, to our next quote, um, which actually isn't a wonderful one. Um, it, it should be one that includes a quote about prisons as well. Um, are there no prisons? Is the first part of this missed out here. And then it goes on, and the union workhouses, to manage Scrooge, are they still op in operation? And its overall interpretation of Scrooge has no care for the poor and sees them as both lazy and inhuman. Um, and uh, a bit at the bottom, a quote references Thomas Malthus's economic ideology. It doesn't actually, that's the next bit, so we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, but generally, again, this shows the prejudice of the upper classes against the poor and the fact that they should be locked up in these institutions and kept an eye on. And these are the best things that can be provided for them because they can't be trusted with anything better and so forth. They just want to be kept out of sight, segregated, so they don't have to worry about them more. Um, plainly. And obviously it links to ignorance and want later on and this constant cycle of poverty that remains largely unbroken. Um, but a bit of contextual um, uh, information. Prisons and workhouses, they were not too dissimilar. So prisons were for those who committed crimes, whereas the workhouses were for people who committed no crimes other than being poor. And so they were made to do work in order to earn their keep. And they were fed things like gruel, which is a very lumpy sort of porridge type thing. And um, and many of them sickened and died in the workhouses, um, as a charitable gentleman say. Um, but many would, would rather die than go there, which prompts Scrooge to say his next quote, a charming fellow that he is. Um, but again, people like Scrooge, they thought they were doing enough by funding these institutions, even though they were um, hardly helping the situation and actually exacerbating the problem of poverty. And as Scrooge says, if they would rather die, then they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Again, a very important quote, well worth remembering, and pretty easy to remember as well. Um, bit at the bottom, this quote references Thomas Malthus's economic ideology, suggesting that the rich would soon be able to economically, soon be unable to economically suggest the poor. Um, I think Dickens presents his polemical intent for Christmas Carol here, arguing that current, this current, current ideology was inhumane. Um, Thomas Malthus basically thought that there weren't enough resources to go around in society, and therefore the poor should die off uh, in order to help everyone. There should be a cull. They were not that important. They were better off dead in order to help society on the whole for the greater good, all that sort of thing. Um, it's almost a very early form of, well, it's not quite, but it's not too dissimilar from, you know, the later ideas of eugenics and um, and social Darwinism as well, that um, those who have the wrong um, traits should die off for the best um, possible outcome of the human race. But here is sort of a more practical, um, uh, practical viewpoint, but... Um, Dickens was very firmly against this. He believed that there was more than enough to go around and that it was merely greed and avarice and prejudice that kept all the resources from being shared. And this can also be seen in um, the depiction of the ghost Christmas present when he sits atop a great feast. There's a banquet spread out and it's showing all of the food in the world and it's, it's, it should all be shared equally at Christmas time, at this time of generosity and giving and charity and so forth. But basically Scrooge um, has no care for the poor he has no real knowledge of them either. He says in his next line, um, besides, I do not know that. And, and um, the charitable gentleman replies, but you might know it, essentially, if you take greater interest. Um, first of all, the surplus population, well, I, I, okay, first of all, the mathematical language is very cold. It's very detached. It's very inhumane. Decrease, surplus. He's not talking about individual human beings here. He's talking about the poor en masse. And that enables him to entirely disregard their emotional life and lump them all together into one big statistical problem. Um, and the fact is, as well, that surplus population is represented in the novel, in the novella, by the central figure, Christ-like figure, you could say, a tiny Tim, um, a figure that Scrooge grows to care for very much later on. And so when he has these words quoted back at him later on, we're told that he um, hangs his head in shame to hear his words quoted back at him by the ghost to hear his words quoted against him. And this is, again, Dickens' warning that these attitudes are harmful. Um, they are propagating utter misery amongst poor people who are not the criminals or the awful human beings that the rich like to consider them as. Um, basically, they were 
ordinary human beings who deserve just as much a chance at life as the rest of us, which is something that the ghost Christmas present later says as well. He says that Scrooge might be the surplus population because what right has he to determine who that is? <laughs> 